knew and could see clearly. Now set that up as a backdrop. Because the Bible says that Eve was deceived. That's what Paul says. So how does a person with a pure mind, with the word of God in its profound simplicity in their mind, with an understanding of the word of God, how can they be deceived? You know how they can be deceived? By the physical universe. That's how Eve was deceived. She was deceived because the serpent said, you will not die if you eat from the tree. She looked at the tree. It was pleasant to her eyes. She assumed it would be good for her taste. And she concluded it would make her wise. What I'm trying to say is the deception came in Satan's ability to get her to focus on the physical universe rather than focusing on the word of God. Are you listening to me? So her response to Satan should have been, no, God said in the day that we eat thereof, we will surely die. But Eve had no concept of death, had no reference points of death because no one had ever died before. She'd never been to a funeral before. She'd never grieved the loss of a child before. No rodents, nothing had ever died because God had spoken life into the universe. She had no reference point of what death was. She didn't know, have to know what death was. She only needed to know what the word of God said because it gave life. My point is, it is the enemy's ability to use the physical universe to draw us away from the word of God and away from what God has said and then start acting on what we think. And that's where deception comes into play. Y'all need to get the CD and listen to that. That was good. I don't care what y'all say. Well, let me wrap this up. And so Jesus says, no, don't believe the false teaching. Don't believe the false promises. Because when Christ comes back, everybody's going to know it. And then he's talking about Christ coming back in judgment. And then he gives the signs of his coming toward the end. Now I want to fast forward so I can hit this last point before I take my seat. Verse 36. Because beginning with verse 29 through the end of 24, actually through the end of chapter 25, it's all about preparedness. It's about alertness. And so what he's now doing, he is trying to calibrate them to where they realize you've got to be alert. You've got to be watchful because the world is going to be a dangerous place. And you've got to be alert and you've got to be watchful because I could come at any point and as you see things getting more dangerous, what that simply means is you're getting closer to my coming. So he says, verse 36, but, but of the day and hour no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my father only. But as the days of Noah were, so also will it be with the coming of the Son of Man be. So he's now giving some clues. As it was in the days of Noah, so also shall it be in the day of the coming of the Son of Man. And then he elucidates a little bit more, and he talks a little about the days of Noah. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating, they were drinking, they were marrying, they were given in marriage, until that day Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will it be in the coming of the Son of Man. He couldn't be no clearer than this. He says, in the days of Noah, they were big time in it. They were ballers. Recreation, entertainment, food feasts, buffets, barbecues. They were having a ball. Giving in marriage, taking in marriage. There's one thing that Jesus didn't say about the days of Noah. That their society was filled with violence. In the days of Noah, the society was filled with violence. Now, isn't that interesting? Isn't it interesting that the wealthiest nation in the world, the United States of America, the nation where more money is spent on recreation, on entertainment, and on pleasure, is the United States of America. We have the biggest parties than any other nation in the world. 
yet we're the most violent nation. Isn't that interesting? He says, as it was in the days of Noah, so also shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. So the nation that is the envy of the world, the nation that has all of the wealth and all of the power and all the military might and consumes a disproportion of the world's food, water, and resources is also the most violent nation in the world when you start talking about the type of violence that we have on our streets, in our homes, in our valley. I'm not talking about armies now. I'm talking about people doing murder, don't have no reason to murder nobody. I'm not talking about a state of war where a declaration of war has been declared. We're a nation, a free nation, a free people. And we kill people for no reason. As it was in the days of Noah, so also should be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. And then he closes this section with this. Two men will be in the field, one will be taken, the other left. Two women will be granted to the meal, one will be taken, and the other left. See, people don't understand that the Lord's coming is going to be so sudden. It's going to be without warning. The signs will all be there, but God is not going to send you an email. You're not going to get text. He's not going to tweet you and say, get ready. No, it's just going to happen. People are going to be just working somewhere, doing their job, and boom, one is taken into judgment. That's what this is about. The other one is left to enter into the kingdom. He's talking about the, the point in time at the end when the kingdom is ushered in. And then he closes this section with this. Verse 42. Watch. Watch, therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. Watch. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore, you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour when you do not expect him. He couldn't have made it any clearer. He says, now, most thieves don't give you a warning, I'm going to break in your house on March the 22nd at 10 o'clock. He said, if a thief were to tell you the date and the time they were going to break in your house, you'll be right there waiting on him when he came in and said, I got something for you. Come on up in here. He said, thieves don't do that. He said, well, I'm telling you I'm coming. <laughs> you better be ready. I'm not going to tell you the hour. I'm not going to tell you the time. But I am warning you, I am coming back. And you better be ready. You better be watching. Verse 45, who then is the, the, the faithful and wise servant? His master made that servant whom his master when he comes will find so doing. Assuredly, I say to you that he will make him ruler over all his goods. But if that evil servant says in his heart, my master delay in his coming and begin to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with drunkards, the master of that servant will come on a day when he's not looking for him and in an hour that he's not aware of and will cut him in two and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. Thus shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So he illustrates it this way. The master leaves. He leaves someone over his household, over his goods. And the one who's left over the goods to steward is to manage the master's goods. He's to disseminate food to the master's servants. He's to take care of the people until the master comes back. He says, but that wicked servant, after the master's been gone for a long time, he ain't coming back, start backslapping the servants, beating the servants, and mistreating the servants. This text is applicable to what we're supposed to be as the church. We are to be those who manage God's household in his absence. The word of God he has committed to us, and we're to feed the people, feed the flock, feed the sheep, feed the lambs. And we're to be compassionate toward people and to show them the love of Christ. And we're not to become cold and callous and apathetic and indifferent because the rest of the world is getting cold and callous and apathetic and indifferent. We're always to be reminded, except by the grace of God, we will be on skid row. Except by the grace of God, someone could be pimping us on the street. Except by the grace of God, we could find ourselves in a homeless shelter. 
except by the grace of God, our children